Welcome to my channel. I'm Zhang Jingxu. Let's look at the problem 79 in chapter 10. In this chapter, we talk about rotational motion. And in this system, we have a car, right? The car's mass is given, and it has four tires. The tire's mass is given. The diameter of the tire is given, so we can get the radius, just a d over 2, 0 0.4 meter. Now, this is all the quantity is given. First one, we consider the total kinetic energy of the car when it travels at 95 km per hour. So this one gives you the velocity for this object, right? So you must convert the unit kilometer per hour to unit meter per second. The first time we consider the kinetic energy, it should include two parts, the leader kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy. So leader kinetic energy, so this car has a unified object, so it has a mass for the car plus four tires, right? V square. And then we consider rotational motion. The object, only these four wheels do the rotational motion, so it is I omega square. This I momentum of ratio just come from the wheel, the tires, right? So it is a four, four tires times for each one, one half mR square, and the relationship Omega with the V is in this function. So now we can input the I inside the function and the omega inside, you get the function. Look at this one. Simplified, you get the function. Final answer is there. The second one asks you the fraction of kinetic energy in tire and wheels. So this is the final ratio between each other. The velocity is still 95 km per hour converted to the unit meter per second. The first one, if we consider the total, this is we just did in previous question, it is this one, right? One half m plus six m v square. This is uh, we did in problem A. The six, the problem B, we need to find kinetic energy for the tire. That is easy. First is the, the linear kinetic energy for tire is one half four m, just the four tires, four small m v square plus the rotational motion. And then you input this quantity inside, you get it there. And use this one divided by this one, we get the ratio. The kinetic energy tire to the total kin uh, kinetic energy. It is this one, right? Then you are done. The third one tells you that initially the car is stationary and is then pulled by a track. And the track act force 1500 Newton on the car, as Q5 acceleration for the car. So this one we find is the external force is 1500 Newton. Right. Now we apply Newton's second law for this object. The net force comes from the force acted by the truck and the friction force, the tire, the ground to the tire. So four tires, so we times four there. The total mass is a car plus four tire times acceleration A, right? It looks like if we want to find acceleration A, we must find the friction first. How can we find the friction? We consider this car do the rotational motion. So rotational motion, we have the net torque equal to the I times alpha, right? And the I is the momentum of E ratio for this four tire, so four, one half mR squared, so this one is there. And the relationship linear acceleration with alpha is there. So you input the I and alpha inside, you get a function, look like this one. And then solve it, you get a function, friction, and the mass A in this one. Now you can input, input is a fraction inside, so the fraction just equal to how, how much? So full fraction equal to 2 ma, so this one, you input it is there. See? You input it is there. Then you solve this equation, you get the force equal to mass times 6m acceleration. Now you get the acceleration. The next, next one asks you the percentage error would make if you just ignore the rotational uh, motion. If you just ignore the rotational motion, so that means we consider this car and the tire as a united one. It's an object, right? It does not do the rotational motion. So the, in this one, the force acted by the truck must equal to total mass times acceleration, A plus. So A plus is F 
over mass capital mass plus the four m. You get the final answer. Then we find the percent error is just a four percent. Thank you.